Hi, my name is Rob and I'm excited to share with you some of the latest trends in 3D printing. This technology is evolving so rapidly that it's hard to keep track of all the changes, but I'm here to break it down for you and to show you what to expect in the coming years. Fasten your seatbelts and get ready for a wild ride. And if you want to buy a 3D printer or 3D scanner, just head to visionminer.com. We got everything you need. So, Jabil, a global manufacturing company, mostly contract manufacturing, meaning that there's a really good chance that something within arm's reach of you right now was made by them. They've sponsored three different 3D printing trend surveys over the last few years to enable the exploration of where additive is going and to learn more about its current realities. The 2021 survey contains insight from more than 300 participants responsible for decisions around 3D printing at manufacturing companies specifically. Now these respondents come from a wide variety of industries from electronics and plastics and packaging to industrial machines, automotive, healthcare, and more, which gives us a full picture of the 3D printing market and how additive manufacturing is really being used. So number one, use cases are skyrocketing. Back in 2017, the most popular use for 3D printing was rapid prototyping. Nearly seven out of 10 respondents were using it for that purpose. Now in 2019, research and development surpassed prototyping as the most popular 3D printing application. Now, in 2023, close to 100% of participants say they were using 3D printing to produce functional or end-use parts. That's all we're about here at Vision Miner is engineering materials they're actually going to use in parts. Jigs and fixtures are another topic for another day. Number two, growth projections are getting bigger and bigger every year. 97% of manufacturers expect their use of 3D printing to grow within the next five years. And most participants said that they expect their company's use of 3D printing to at least double in the same time frame. Nearly half expect their use to at least double, while almost four out of 10 expected their increase to be dramatic, which means five times or more. In addition to the growing acceptance of 3D printing industry-wide, once again, the accessibility of the technology is what's gonna drive this growth. Now, while companies aim to grow their overall 3D print capabilities, expectations are set very high to use it in production parts and actual goods. Now, a little over 80% of respondents expect their additive manufacturing use for production parts to at least double within the next five years. That means we're gonna start seeing more 3D printed products. There's more and more stuff popping up on Reddit and Instagram where it's like, hey, check out this thing on the side of the road. It's totally 3D printed. More of that definitely coming. And number three, companies are just starting right now to enjoy the benefits of 3D printing. According to a recent survey, the top three benefits companies report enjoying thanks to added manufacturing are the ability to deliver parts faster, to increase creativity of those parts, and of course, cost savings, which is huge. Now, another interesting point is that executives are more optimistic about the benefits of 3D printing than the team managers. Now, this is kind of funny. It's probably because the executives really see the long-term bottom line, the ROI, whereas the managers are probably dreading the team training and all the new processes to implement. So, say la vie. Number four, more materials are available now than ever before. This is a big one. Companies have been seeing this dramatic increase in material types since about 2019. Just five years ago, it seemed like there was only a handful of materials, PLA, ABS, and Ultim on Stratasys. But now you've got PETG, PCTG, PET, PP, PEKK, PEEK, PA6, PA12, PLA, and a million other ones. Everyone in their mom's blend of nylon with carbon fiber. If you wanna see just a small section of engineering materials, go to visionminer.com slash materials and you'll see everything that we carry. Although plastics and polymers still reign supreme and the majority of 3D printing is in plastic, other materials are starting to catch up now, especially metals. Now this corresponds with the use cases are also increasing. More materials, more use cases, more abilities, makes total sense. Now, when it comes to primary usage, the discrepancy between plastic and metal 3D printing isn't as big as you might think. Number five, we've still got some stuff to figure out in 3D printing. Despite the optimism and growth and everything in this industry, companies and organizations, everybody's still solving challenges that are still arising. It's new tech, it keeps getting better. There's, you know, you make something better and uh, you discover a new problem. That's the way it works. It's all good. Back in 2019, about half the respondents listed the cost of materials as an issue, but only about two-fifths did this year. So it's 
costs are coming down. The top challenge in 2021 was the cost of pre and post processing. It does appear that companies are branching out in their pre and post processing methods since in 2019, a little over half the respondents said that they were using machining. Now, almost three quarters of respondents are dethroning polishing as the most popular option and their machining parts too. A big part of this is high temperature materials, which are able to be machined. A lot of the low temp stuff, if you take a spindle that's running at 30,000 RPMs, you try to cut something, it just melts the plastic. But with the high temp materials, it doesn't. So you can actually print a net shape part and machine it to perfection if you want, or you can you know, tap threads, drill holes, whatever you need to do. And number six, in-house printing is more popular than outsourced printing. Makes a lot of sense. Now, it turns out most companies are moving towards in-house 3D printing as opposed to out of house with three quarters of the survey participants doing everything in house. Now, this is likely because companies want to educate their employees about additive or hire personnel that's already got experience and knowledge in 3D printing. But, you know, a lot of businesses also aren't necessarily opposed to outsourcing their additive. Almost 100% indicated that they would consider it as an option. When examining potential manufacturing partners, companies take a wide range of criteria into account, such as design capabilities, ability to scale and pricing and experience. So if you're a shop and you've got CAD skills and you can help design the part and then you can print that part and then you can scale that part to the hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands of parts, then you're gonna be a great one-stop shop. So basically overall, more people want to do 3D printing inside their business, which makes perfect sense. In our print service, we might charge $400 for a part, but the equivalent material, just the material cost with the right machinery, really only costs around $40. Return on investment is all about having your own machines and systems in house. So if you're a business and you want to do 3D printing or 3D scanning, we're here for you. That's all we do. We don't print toys and trinkets. We're all about the functional machines materials and industrial machines out there. So just give us a call or shoot us an email. We are here to help. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a positive rest of your day and I'll see you on the next one.